uh, six years later, we're having a chat about The Leftovers. It's Ethan here uh, from America, and I got Benji over in the UK. I'm still in season one. We're in episode four, the BJ and the AC. What? Well, before I get into uh, the credits, did you like this episode? Yeah, I did. I would probably place it um, so far for me, two has been the kind of lowest, and then I would place four just above that, followed by three above that, and then still so far the pilot for me has been the best. Right on. Um, by all means, this was not a bad episode. It just wasn't. It was good. It was not. It didn't feel like a lot happened, which is maybe my problem. It, it felt like not there wasn't a lot of progression um but i believe there was a lot of progression in the smaller things and that's important for the progression in the larger things to take place so i guess we've got to get this done first and yeah and also um also uh this holiday season i was thinking about does my favorite show the leftovers have a christmas episode and i guess this is it this is a cri- the, yeah yeah this is the, this is the one the leftovers christmas special um, so we'll get right into it. It's got, it doesn't have a great name, the BJ and the AC. We can talk about what that means later. I think the first one is baby Jesus and the second one, uh, antichrist. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought it was air conditioning. So I guess I was wrong. Well, air conditioning. Why? What happened? The AC? No, I don't know. I just, I just assumed it was air conditioning. Oh, okay. Absolutely I mean, no symbolism whatsoever. I, I it, just, Okay, so the reason why I mentioned Leslie Lincoln Gladder, and I think her name is recognizable to me from from uh, Breaking Bad, is because we open this episode with a very Breaking Bad type montage in in the baby doll factory, yeah. right? When you're first watching, you're like, "What is going on? What am I watching?" Yeah. At which point are they going to slip the um, crystal meth inside the doll? Uh, yeah, they're going to distribute it in the in the truck. Are they going to put the blue, the blue stuff in there? And uh, well, I believe the baby was uh, a blue doll. There was, there was something about it being blue. So yep, and baby, uh, baby blue. There you go. It was the boy one. Yep. Um, and uh, you know, we follow this baby Jesus to the store um, where it gets purchased and uh, and uh, put in the correct clothing. It's been adorned accordingly and. It's been stolen, and we have the credits. Boom, leftovers. So let's get right into it. Patty from the GR's meeting. Kevin asked Patty if the GR will be respectful of the dance at the uh, high school so everyone can have a nice night with their family. She replies by writing down the credo, one of the credos of the GR, there is no family, and then shows him a picture of Lori. And uh, not only am I not going to do what you tell me, but also, you know, F you. Here's a picture of your wife. That's over here yeah and, and i mean we, she was annoying me last episode and he's getting she's there. uh maintaining maintaining good form this episode and you know patty doesn't let you that, down in that direction uh and basically kevin is, is setting up a sting he's kind of taunting them and um mm-hmm. he's been told the baby jesus has been stolen and he just doesn't care it's not really a lot of analysis this episode we're just seeing things happen we're with tommy and christine She's six weeks out. She's is that the first time we learned she's pregnant this episode? It was news to me. Oh really? I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe I missed um missed a, a reference somewhere, but it you know it definitely wasn't made super clear uh, unless I fell asleep for that bit. I don't think I did. It was definitely for me. It was the first time hearing about it. Although we we'd had that, you know, there was obviously suggestions that way, and that may have been happening, but. Whether, whether or not there was a baby was still in the air for me. Well, you know what? I think you're right. Um, and maybe that has some uh, something going on with it with the baby Jesus, too. But you know what? I think you're right. And I didn't think we knew she was pregnant, but she is pregnant. Yeah, she seems- and that's a good point. Yeah. I didn't I didn't make that connection, the, uh, the baby, baby Jesus and the, the baby in uh, Chrissy. Lil Wayne? <laughs> I, that, that might be a joke stolen from somewhere else. I don't know. Uh, she's six weeks out there in some kind of public housing mental facility. I can't really figure that out. Yeah, it's, 
you know, whatever the place is, it's uh, it's not your usual clientele that you would find in, say, a hotel, a nice hotel. It definitely seemed like these people were, uh, well, I mean, you, you saw the guy, right? Well, yeah, well, yeah, and here's another thing. Maybe I jumped ahead too much, too. I said six weeks out of my notes, but I don't think she gets told she's pregnant until after she goes to the hospital after she gets accosted by this half-naked man. The half-naked man says uh, really ominous things like, uh, I know what's inside of you. Right, right. Right. And that's before we learn about the baby. Right. And he saw her in a dream, and I know what's inside of you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, So sorry if we skipped ahead there. Let's go to Jill and Amy real quick. Okay, now we'll go to Jill and Amy. Kevin is looking for Christmas tree decorations and questions Jill about, have you seen your brother? Have you talked to them? Right? Uh, It may be a little early to jump on this, but I'm going to set this up now so we can explore it more as the episode goes on. We did say earlier that there wouldn't be a whole lot of analysis to do uh, in terms of symbolism this time, this episode. But there was one theme that I spotted, which was, obviously we've established already that this show is primarily dealing with the theme of loss. What we see here is there's some Christmas decorations that are lost. And so Kevin comes out with uh, some alternative Christmas decorations and he says, hey, we'll just use these. And then Jill, the daughter, says, no, um, no, we're not doing that. She says, you can't, you can't just replace it like that. That's not how it works. We also see that the baby Jesus is stolen. And later on in the episode, we're going to see that uh, even in this conversation, actually, Kevin, Kevin talks about it to Jill and he says, hey, we'll just, you know, we'll just go buy a new one, go replace it. And Sorry, yeah, that's that's it's all happening in this conversation. Maybe it's not exactly how I said it, but Jill at one point says, you know, you can't just replace it. I can't remember who's talking about the decorations or the baby, but it's it's getting at the same idea, which is when something's lost, you can't just replace it like that. And it doesn't it doesn't fix it to replace it like that. And later we're gonna to come to something that happens in the episode. We touched on in previous episodes, there was an ad for loved ones in in, in episode three with Matt and that's obviously their 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 primary job is replacing you know giving you a physical replacement of what you've lost and so we're going to come back to that later but already I'm seeing a slight theme here of you can't it's it's so hard to replace something that's been lost and that's what this whole thing with the baby Jesus is and it's what the thing with the decorations is it's good and it all goes back to you know Jill and her mom right mm-hmm. You can't replace your mom, and we'll, we'll get more yeah. to that, right? Um, and we, uh, I guess, another one you've just made me realize is we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to this one later. But it's about Kevin's relationship with Tommy and his real relationship as a father and the role he plays as a replacement. We can come to that though. There's talk already that the baby Jesus was stolen. Um, people are talking about it at school. Kevin says the police have real police work and they're too busy to look for the baby Jesus. Um, he has point blank as kind of a, and I don't think he thinks she stole it. He says, did you steal the baby Jesus to Jill? And he goes, obviously not. She goes, obviously not that sick. He goes, well, I'm, I'm a policeman. I got a real job to do. So he doesn't, he doesn't go in for this quote unquote religious mumbo jumbo. Um, have you noticed any uh, tension with Amy or Kevin together? Um, there's a moment she she eats a sandwich, right? And he says, "You enjoying my sandwich?" Yeah. Uh, he seems a little bit annoyed, and she just kind of says, "And and he leaves." And I think it's important to uh, note here because we didn't notice it last episode, just how good looking Kevin is. Oh right, right. We completely with those, with those eyes. He broke broke the streak, but yeah, you was, know we can we can double down on it this time so to yeah. make up for that. We'll put a little, we'll put a ender on that episode. Yeah, so we see the mayor yelling at someone on the phone, and she says, yes, get the white one, as in the white uh, doll for the baby Jesus. Um, And I've always been lost on this part. Why is this the chief of police's job to find the baby Jesus? Um, Um, You know, it seems like the kind of job the chief of police would have in a town where nothing strange ever happens and it's very peaceful all the time maybe in in that town the baby jesus goes missing and the chief of police 
goes and finds it. In this town, however, we know things are a little bit different, and there's obviously a, a fair amount of unrest, and you've got the GR, and you've got troublesome you know, teens breaking the law. So, yeah, I, I, I it does seem a little beneath his pay grade. And even given to him, he would give the money to someone below him and mm-hmm. say, go get the baby Jesus, right? Um, and he goes... Because he says she, he, she says he needs a win, which he does. Obviously, he's having trouble filling his father's shoes, and he goes to buy one. And then his policeman, his policeman instinct with him is kicking in. He can't just buy one; he's got to find the one that was stolen, mm. right? He doesn't. Yeah, act well, there's um, right. He doesn't. But also, there's a moment when he's talking to the mayor. And you see when he's when he's talking to Jill about the baby, he says, oh, we can just go find a new one. He, he almost says word for word what the mayor says to him. But when the mayor says it to him, he says, it, he kind of acts like they mock this belief. He's like, what, buying the ball? And so he sort of switches up angle um, now that he's he's out talking to the mayor. I don't know why why he does that. And I would hope it's not just him being contrary to, to, to the mayor. Um, but it, it was definitely a weird little change but, of But it does opinion. speak to his character. He does seem to be contrary out of the gate with everybody. Right, and I mean, that is true. So it, it would make sense if it was only in that sense. Right, and uh, his brakes fail, and they never really talk about that again, right? Uh, Tommy and Christine are in the hospital. It's the first natal visit, right? They're mm-hmm. checking her out. Oh yeah, so we didn't know before. He's he's twelve weeks. She's twelve weeks. Twelve, 12 weeks, weeks along. Right. Uh, the technician asks too many questions, uh, and so Tommy skips out of there. We go to the, your favorite characters in the world, and I think it's because they look a little like you. I think if you had the twins, they would <laughs> look a little bit like you. Yeah, um, put some glasses on them. Now, are they getting pulled over by Kevin and Kevin's truck, or the truck people say was Kevin's? That was actually the guy who shoots the dogs. Uh, you know, I'm not a truck expert, and I'm not sure. Right. Um, that was a, a square thought I had, a spare thought. Um, uh, Kevin, I guess instead of, I guess he think he picked up something from Jill, and so he finds the twins and asks if they stole the baby Jesus. And I, I really think he picked up something from Jill, like a, mm. whatever your intuition you have as a police officer. Yeah. Um, well, also he mentions that he checked the security tapes, right? Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, and ask them. He says he needs the B. He needs the BJ returned ASAP. He's not gonna. He's not gonna arrest anyone. Just we need the baby Jesus back. Mm-hmm. And here, where we get confirmation that Jill or her friends, who, who did they say they saw the twin steal it, right, on the video camera. Someone, someone with a hoodie. Uh, I'm wondering if happens to be wearing a hoodie at the time. So there's he a him, he's just profiling. Campfire with Jill and friends. Jill did steal the baby Jesus, and her friends did. Surprise. Yep. Um, all the friends, they do some stupid teenage things I don't want to get into with the baby yeah. Jesus. Um, and they want to give it a Viking funeral and light some Nerf darts on fire and put it in the in the water and shoot it and on fire. But at the last minute, Jill can't do it because Jill's a good girl. Darn it. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that was the angle it went with in my mind. I was like, you know, can she even hit that shot? Like it was getting pretty, pretty far out. Uh, I would have been impressed if she had, I mean, I wouldn't be impressed in, in that sense, but I, I would have been impressed if she'd managed to hit that shot. Um, so yeah, I, no, uh, no, she, she also hit. had to put the ball down because it was, it was pretty I, far out. I don't doubt she could have hit that shot. I think she could have hit that shot. I think that she chose not to hit the shot. She knew she was too good a shot. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. She would burn the baby Jesus. And uh, It was clear the decision was between – the, the the decision was, am I going to hit it or am I going to walk away? There was never any doubts as to whether it would miss. But right. I was thinking, no. you know, if it was me in that situation, I don't know if I'd be so confident. What a boring scene that would be if, like, she just shot. Like, that game <laughs> yeah, it's like that. That's yeah. I was, I was just about to say that. The Edmir yeah. Tully of the leftovers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Tobias Menzies, always in our hearts. Um, Who's the blackfish in leftovers? 
Uh, the twins, the Blackfish is so hardcore, he, there's two people. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're back to Tommy. The bus stop. Oh, he's at the bus stop, and this is uh, a little bit of cheesy of a scene. He, you know, he I guess he prays to, for Wayne to sh- show him a sign. Yeah, I don't know if it's as much as a, I guess you could call it a prayer. He sort of just shouts at the phone. Right. Um, but there's a, there's a, there's a moment with the, um, there's a, there's a couple of members of the GR, right? Right. You see, it's not, it, it's not our GR. It's from a, a different, obviously it's the other side. I, I think it's the other side of the country, but I guess that confirms as well, doesn't it? That the GR is a pretty widespread organization, which we'd already suspected, but this confirmed that. And they give him a, they give him like a, a pamphlet, right? Uh, well, nothing inside. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. I think that the, the line was, um, Good one know, it was it was something along the lines of here's what matters about you or like here's what you really are i don't know it was it was something like that and he opened it up in his blank and he, and he gave them props for it too right he was like he oh that's props. a good one i get it you guys are funny i i i, I gave them props for that yeah good job gr hilarity i have here kevin almost runs over a dog did that happen well there's a there's one other thing to mention about that scene of tommy which is when the phone does ring but it's not Wayne. It's like um, it's an ad for loved ones, right? And and Tommy just laughs. Right, right, right. It is an ad for loved ones, but uh, but because you know this phone gets calls all the time. The robo calls mm-hmm. are going crazy. He happens to get one at that exact moment. And that was sarcasm. Mm-hmm. So I find that, and of course, he didn't get on the bus. Kevin almost runs over a dog. That's my only note. I took these at six in the morning, mm-hmm. so I don't know if I missed something there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely. I mean, it's a dog. I mean, no Kevin's track record with dogs, so I'm glad he swerved for this one. Meg and Lori come to visit Kevin and deliver Kevin and Lori's divorce papers. Yeah. Um, Meg is supposed to read out a statement saying how it's not his fault, uh, and wants to say thank you for being a good husband. Yeah, and that actually that letter confirmed. Well, not confirms because we didn't know at this point, but it lets us know that Tom is not his biological son, which is a fairly important point. And I was saying, yeah, his um you know, he's taller than uh Justin Thoreau and he's blonde, so it wasn't hard. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean just while we're talking while we're talking about Tommy's appearance, I, I'm gonna have to ask you to if you have um like a, a tab up you can open a tab and Google something for me. And anyone who's listening can follow along if you currently have a device available. Uh, and it's a it's a safe scenario. Um, so if you search for a actor called Alan Richson, so that's Alan A L A N R I T C H S O N, and just take a look at this guy because for for a while I was getting him. I knew Tommy was reminding me of somebody, but I didn't know who. And I think I found the guy. So this is not the actor who played Tommy. This is a, another actor, but in my eyes, he looks very very similar to Tommy. See if you can. I can see him. Spot that. You can see that. Yeah. And it's another sexy man. It is, and it's very, very similar bone, facial, facial structure. You know, similar color hair, similar build. Well, we should say that for our sexy man podcast, which we're doing right after this. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, but that's who you thought Chris was. I mean, that Chris Zelka. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think it was him. I just knew he reminded me of somebody, and I couldn't put my finger on who. And then I realized it was this guy. Who, for anyone who's wondering, uh, if I check, he is the actor from a TV show called Blue Mountain State, and I believe he plays uh, he plays um, a character named Thad Castle. Thad. Um, Thad. Yeah, he's a real. Uh, I think it's Thad. T H A D. All right, that's not a real name. Anyway. No, no, it's not. It's, Any, it's, it's anybody true. who names their kid Thad has got problems. Uh, well, he's a, he's a troubled kid, so. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, he's not troubled. He's, um, he probably named he's, himself. He's, quite, he's a personality. Probably, You'd have to see the show, I think. Probably named himself Thad. Right. All right, well, so Jill comes in in the middle, um, mm-hmm. and things are pretty tense because Kevin is losing his mind after, you know, this divorce, these divorce papers are being dropped on him. Yeah, I mean, justifiably so, I think. Yeah, totally. Um, and no one's saying Kevin's anger is misplaced at all. Mm. Um, Jill comes in there. And it's like the, the audacity, kind of what he's leading on. The, the 
the old the audacity of trying to divorce him without even saying the words to him right just because it's what she is mm. I this cult has told her to do yeah yeah and I, I i assume they're going to follow all the standard cult procedures of taking your property your money disassociating with your friends and family mm. uh jill comes home in the middle and goes right to the tree to give Lori a Christmas gift and goes to her room. Lori leaves. Um, Lori leaves and she opens her gift and it's a nice, very nice lighter engraved with Mm -hmm. don't forget me. She pauses for a minute. Uh, Meg says, you can keep it. I won't tell anyone. She looks at Meg, goes to the drain, drops it down the drain and they move on. Yeah. And that's, um, quite a moment it is quite a moment and it's clearly a show of discipline to show meg mm-hmm. the way you're supposed mm-hmm. to do it mm-hmm. and i but i don't think it's a secret that we're all like ah, she's not happy she's not she's she's well we've seen her in um episode three uh staking out. out yeah yeah hanging out in the backyard um okay so we go back to Tommy, um, and he has uh, marked himself on his forehead with a with a target to become. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they call him that here. What what they call him in the book is called the Barefoot People, which okay. is another cult that was popular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. They didn't call. I don't. I don't think I heard that name, but I surmise as much that it's uh, cool. There's um. There's a moment. Sorry, when he's in the elevator and he's got that bullseye and he's, he's barefoot and a, a guy I can't remember what he says but he, he says something to him about like how did you get this way along those lines uh, and Tommy says he was abandoned by his father um, which is interesting and I don't know if he means I don't know if he means his biological father um, or Kevin so we've, we've, we've just previously established that those are two different people or Wayne so, or Wayne I guess yeah. So, I mean, yeah. um, they ask him, how did you get Hello. it? He didn't, he also asked them why, uh, why aren't you wearing, you know, they wanted to point out he was not wearing shoes. Why are you not wearing shoes mm. in the hospital? You know, we don't believe in footwear. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin, uh, so he gets Christine out of the hospital, gives her the mark too, and they run away. Kevin, yeah. Kevin wakes up in his old room, or maybe Tommy's where they moved. Um, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But he wakes up and he's. We see he has tattoos. I'm just going to ask you because um, I'm not. Maybe I should be, but I'm not uh, an expert on Justin Furrow's uh, body, um, and whether those tattoos are for the purpose of the show or he just has them. Oh, he, you will be. <laughs> it's um obviously that would that would change the way we talk about these. Um, Justin Thoreau has a lot of tattoos. Okay, so uh, do you think those those are that's a case of that? Uh, it's a case of Justin Thoreau has ta- those tattoos, so Kevin Garvey has those tattoos. Okay, because I was going to mention otherwise the link to Jack on Lost, who also has tattoos, and his tattoos are a source of. Uh, some mystery for other islanders, right? Uh, in one of the what they think was one of the considered one of the low points of that show, there was an episode where they tried to explain Jack's tattoos. Well, I look forward to that episode. Yeah, and so um, I think in this show they're just like, well, what are we gonna do? Put full makeup on him every time he takes right. off? No, he's got tattoos. Yeah, right. okay, he's got tattoos. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um. He's got some amazing, huge tattoos on his rugged, rugged back. Yeah, uncomfortable silence. I love it. So I don't know whose room that is. He's looking at old pictures. It's also another picture of uh, a picture of pre- pregnant Lori with another man. So we're just hammering this home. Right, right, right. Kid yeah. is not. Mm-hmm. Kevin uh, tell does not decide at this point not to tell Jill about the divorce, and in the worst case of sneaking around in the history of sneaking around, Kevin catches the twins putting <laughs> this back on the porch. 
uh, and then one of the twins drives away, and the other one is that run after him. That was a nice moment. Again. It's a real Sopranos moment. If you've got, if anyone's seen that season three. Hey, before before we talk about the this moment, can we go back to Joe's room for a second? Because I yeah, noticed yeah. on 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 Joe's room those um poster, I believe. I'm assuming it's like a, a band, some kind of band called the Evaporators. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, which is which is which is uh, I assume a, a nod to the departure. A post, the a other, post departure right, band, yeah. I don't know, maybe, yeah, either either it's a post-departure band or it's just a band and there's a link and that's why it's on the wall. And there was another poster, I, I couldn't make out what it said in it, but it was, it was like, no, the Uh And I I tried doing a bit of digging on that one. I didn't really come up with anything, so. Uh, Christine and Tommy are on the bus. Christine is getting chummy with a Marine named Tommy. And it's the second time. Well, not the second time. We see Christine talking but it's the second time because we already know she talked to that guy who who goes kind of ma- mental on her um at, at the place that was saying that so it's she clearly has a pattern of talking when she really shouldn't be talking to people it is interesting it shows that she is probably not stoked with what's happening and wants to go to a place where she can talk to people again because in the first episode she was the reason why her and uh, tommy get along so much is they're pretty chatty together right mm-hmm. Uh, but the bus is stopped, and so is uh, Tommy's rage at seeing her talk to someone. Mm-hmm. When a carload of loved ones' corpses right. are all over the side of the road from a truck accident. Yeah, and it's weird because it takes a little while to establish that it that's what it is. It's it's the loved ones. Uh, so it's it's unsettling. It's, it's unsettling. And and this one um, was a, a link I got to the right at the beginning of the episode when we see the baby doll being man- manufactured. Mm-hmm. Um, that made me think of how, you know, it seemed to be a similar process to, I, I imagine, obviously at, at a higher, more kind of expert level, how these loved ones, uh, I don't know what to call them, creations are being, well, created. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's a, a little link there between the, the baby Jesus and the loved ones. Uh, they're not the ACs. And Christine says they're all in white, just like the dream. Is she talking oh, about... Wait, when you say AC, you mean artificial corpses, right? Oh, man, we figured it out. The baby <laughs> Jesus and the artificial corpses. Christine says they're all in white, just like the dream. Um, oh, yeah. Is that the dream that the guy... Did he say it mentioned that... Um, so, know? well, I don't... I can't remember us as the audience ever seeing a dream, so... But her and Tommy have obviously discussed some kind of a dream, and I'm assuming, I don't know, maybe it's a similar dream to the, the, the half-naked guy had. I don't well, know. that's what I'm saying. I think uh, maybe he mentioned it in that. She says, just like the dream. You know, I don't know if Christine is starting to have any thoughts of herself being a right. Mary, Mary-type Mary figure to having a, a Jesus-type figure being pregnant with Holy Wayne's baby. You know, that's a good comparison that I hadn't, I hadn't thought about yet. But, well, if that's the case, does that mean her and Wayne were never you know, intimate? Because I don't, I don't believe that's the case. I feel like her and Wayne were intimate for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't think the comparison goes quite that far. Uh, now we're going to go to the dance, the dance at the gym. The gym is neutral territory. Anyway, hope someone gets that. The, <laughs> oh, I was going to say one, one final thing about those loved one uh, ACs, as we, we would call them now. Is so that was what I was um, alluding to at the beginning of the episode when I was talking about the the theme of the episode being loss and how do you replace something that you've lost? Sure. Uh, and we have the baby Jesus that goes and the heat Kevin's told to go buy a new one in a similar way to these uh, loved ones. ACs are being sent to replace a, a, a real person in this case that's been lost. So you you have that and and the fact that. Kevin rejects that that approach of just kind of buying a new one. I don't know what that is, what what kind of comment that makes on these loved ones creations. But the other, and like I said at the beginning, you have the the Christmas decorations, who, where Jill kind of rejects them because it, you know you can't just. It's it's really not so easy, uh, clearly, to replace something that's been lost. That's just getting 
artificial, similar-looking copies of them. And that's kind of established in, in those three places with those little dolls, the, the baby Jesus, and the Christmas decorations. I really like that. I really like the um, the comparison with Kevin not being able just to replace it so easily, too. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. I haven't I hadn't thought about that. That's really good. Um, and when you say that, you're talking about Tommy, right? The, uh, no, Kevin, you know, I, I know I'm always thinking in terms of Lori with him. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Kevin, uh, Tommy seems to be... I was going to say about Tommy was when he said he was abandoned by his father. So there's obviously a theme of whether that if that was his biological father obviously kevin's the replacement there and it doesn't seem to have quite worked again i'm suggesting that the replacement is not the same and i don't but think when... he's blaming kevin for that mm-hmm. i don't think he's thinking about kevin too much in that way he would you would treat a normal parent uh if you're going through something like you wouldn't call them mm-hmm. but i don't think of uh tommy and kevin in terms of for some reason how messed up the family is i think they have a "Quote unquote good relationship," even though yeah, because there's a moment there is there is a there is a moment when Tommy tries to call Kevin. Um, it's almost his first reaction before um, before I can't remember exactly what happened, but he does try and call Kevin. Kevin misses the call, and there's another moment as well when he's on the bus step and he just kind of says to himself, "I, I want to go home." So obviously things aren't obviously things aren't ir- irreparable between him and Kevin because that option is open to him. Um, uh, the other thing I want to mention, actually, and this is just something that's been bugging me a little bit, is so Kevin, Kevin's phone, right? In the first episode, we see him calling Tommy, and I, I'm trying to place like the kind of time they're in the year by looking at the phone because in in the first episode, he seemed to have a pretty old like iOS running on his phone, uh, and then in this episode, he looks like he's got a nice, sleek, updated, much newer, like the actual graphics of him calling is very different. So maybe he's just replaced his cell phone in between the episodes. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find uh, like a direct picture-to-picture comparison for you for next time we discuss this. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, No, I didn't. And uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know how. You can look and do it. I don't know how much different it makes. I, I would just assume he changed phones. Um, You're right, right. Yeah. Could, um, be, could be. But I mean, go, go for it. I mean, this is what this kind of thing is for. I'll take a look. Um, we're at the dance. Kevin goes and makes a really, really half-assed, half-hearted speech telling everyone he found the baby Jesus. He just wants to get out of there and go to his um, uh, guilty remnant sting operation. Mm -hmm. But on the way out, he runs into one Nora Durst. They seem to hit it off. He recognizes her. They both confess their various infidelities. To be fair to Nora, it's not her. It's not her, her infidelity. Right, yeah, they both confess their infidelity story. And uh, before we go outside to the GR, what did you think of the scene between Nora and Kevin? Because I got a question for you about it. It was, uh, it was weird. It was, it, it was like the scene. You know, we have that a couple. We've had a couple moments of that. There was that dream where Amy's waking Kevin up, and there's a little weird vibe, and there was the same kind of vibe again. Yeah, maybe that's just the vibe women have around Kevin. But I'm not sure if there's more to it than that. I, I believe there is. One thing that this scene did establish that I was able to get some clarity on was so in the first episode somebody asks Kevin where he was during the departure and we get a flashback of him you know he's just uh he's getting a little rough and tumble with somebody and we can't quite make out who it is and I I had a feeling at the time it was meant to suggest he was cheating but because it was so fast you couldn't make out who it was I thought well maybe it's his wife I don't know but this conversation obviously clarifies that, and it says, okay, he was. So I'm assuming that's going to be a plot point they build on further because it was came up in the first episode. Might come around again. I don't know. I've never seen the show. Um, <laughs> okay, so here's my question about it. If Kevin Sr. and Matt have this close, tight relationship, wh- why is this the <laughs> first time that Kevin and Nora are like meeting and talking to each other and know each other? And I think, I think it is a plot hole. Um, yeah, uh, and I don't have a good answer for that off the top of my head. Unless Kevin, Maybe, unless Matt as the priest and Kevin Senior as the chief of police have just a special relationship because they are. Cute. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a work relationship, or they they see each other in a a work context regularly. That's uh, a lot. Um. Yeah. Um. Cool. 
All right, we're just going to go through this last little bit of the episode. The GR are there, but they're too far back to touch. As Patty smiles, Kevin realizes that some are missing. We see GR members sneaking around and stealing pictures from people in the houses of all the people that have gone off to the dance. What do you think of that? We got one more section after that. What do you think of that? Yeah. That's a big one. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there was one, there was, a, there was a nice moment. Uh, I had to give Kevin kudos for his line um, when they're arresting the GR, even though they're not technically on the school property, where he says, look, it's our word against theirs. And then obviously, like you say, it, it moves from that into the serving montage of the GR sort of removing what looks, it looks like they're removing all kind of pictures and mementos of family. Uh, and we've already had seen earlier in the episode their, their kind of policy on family is that there is no family. So this, this kind of makes sense uh, in a twisted way. This is what they're trying to do. But I mean, man, it's just scummy move. Like, I have a feeling at some point over the next, over the course of the rest of this season and, and, and onward, we're going to get, obviously we're going to get more information about the GR, and we're going to get information about why Laurie joined the GR, um, and, and you know, what, what the purpose is. And I have a feeling there's going to be stuff in there that makes us think, okay, they're not quite as, maybe they're not quite as bad as we initially assumed them to be. But I mean, regardless of that, it's just a, it's just a scummy move going in and stealing all the stuff like that. You really hate it. That's the most you've ever felt kind of, you know, like physically repulsed. Like, come on, guys, at Christmas, you're going in, you're doing this. It's just such a, it's such a, yeah, so annoyed. I got so annoyed at it. And it's, it's like I was saying, it's, you know, it's, it's the Grinch that's still Christmas. They're going in and they're, I mean, they're straight up breaking and entering. They're not, they're criminals, man. They're like, we've seen how before, like when they got the church from Matt, that was kind of, and again, it was a little bit of a scumbag move, but they did it legally, right? They did it, they did it how they, they did it properly. But here we see they're just, as far as I know, unless unless the, the the laws have changed in these three years after the departure, they're straight up breaking and entering, stealing personal property, and they're getting away with it. And it's just like, man. And, and this chess game with uh with Patty and and Kevin, you yeah. know what I mean? And mm-hmm. he got duped. All the cops are there at the at the exactly at the school. Again, it's like I was saying, I think last time when they when they managed to steal the church, they're so clinically effective and they seem to have, you know, if nothing else, you've got to give them credit for the brains behind the operation, I guess, when it moves. But it's just such a... Yeah, it's, it's it, annoying. I got very annoyed. I got very annoyed. Well, that's how you're supposed to feel. People are going to come home and find pictures missing. It's, it's, it's really shitty. So the last part of the episode, we find Kevin finds Matt replacing the baby Jesus, which is a Matt thing to do. Right, mm-hmm. he, he had... and it was interesting that the the baby looked to me similar to the the artwork in the opening credits. It looked sure. like that kind of a baby with its arms out. And its... Well, that's a this is a this is a baby Jesus made for nativity. This isn't just a mm-hmm. this isn't just a, a a doll someone wrapped up. It's um, it's another indication of Matt not being a total jerk. And we, he has obviously a lot of redeeming qualities, of, as we've seen in the episode. That's dedicated solely to him, and he's another one. He's he's good guy Matt replacing the baby Jesus. Obviously, he's he's a religious guy, so he's he's going to want to do that. But it's still, you know, he didn't have to do that, and it's a it's a nice move by him. You guys need a baby Jesus. I got four in the closet. You guys can have one. <laughs> um, Lori walks back alone and gets the lighter. Yeah. Well, Wait. does she does she get it? She tries to get it. Okay. Spoilers, guys. Sorry. <laughs> well, what is she going to do? She, she got the lighter. <laughs> I mean, I guess she could. Yeah. She's obviously it. intending to get it. It's, yeah. she was, I'd, I'd assume if she couldn't get it the way she was trying, she was going to do move on to other measures. And she's one, get it. she's one extendable flashlight with a magnet on the end away from getting the lighter. It's not going to be hard. magnets, man. Magnet. And, but that would be a nice little thing to add on to end on right nice little she wants it but that's not the leftovers this leftovers ends with kevin throwing the baby jesus out of a car the end the end bah humbug take your baby jesus and shove it right Mm. well hey man that's that episode i appreciate you talking to me about it this has been fun so far i hope we can continue to do them and uh we'll see you next time you know the more mm -hmm, the more we've spoken about this episode the more it's kind of gone up in my mind when I immediately after watching that I didn't 
really feel like it was anything especially special, but we might, there's, there was a lot of stuff in there uh, that we've, we've got through, and I'm, I'm, I'm more impressed, actually, after discussing it, that, that it managed to get so much in there. So, again, like I said last time, if, this is, if these are the week episodes, then, um, boy, I'm looking forward to the good ones. Um, yeah, man, and um, we'll talk about that more next time with Gladys. Thanks for talking. Uh, okay, thank you. All right, dude. Talk to you.